Plays it all the way back to Koulibaly. He drives forward with the ball now. The pressure is still on. Back to Jorginho. Mason Mount and Graham Potter's football is here at Chelsea. What a goal. Heads Kovacic on the ball. Kai Havertz. Cucurella. Plays it into the box. Mason Mount is two for Chelsea. It's two. Hess Sterling on the ball now. Inside the box. Can Chelsea grab a third? Hess Havers. Kai Havers. Back to Cucurella. Far pass to James. Brilliant football. Graham Potter has arrived. A lot has happened since I've been away. Surprisingly, Arsenal are on top of the league. Thomas Tuchel has been sacked and Graham Potter has now taken over Chelsea. So today's video, we are going to be looking at how Chelsea could line up under Graham Potter by looking at his tactics tactics doing a little tactical analysis and in football manager we will be looking at the results in fm we do have three different tactics two are kind of the same formations but different style of play and then we have a complete different formation we all know how fluid grand Potter is with his tactics so in football manager we are also going to have some tactical fun tighten up your seat belts and let's get stuck in Graham Potter's teams consistently chop and change formations and style of play and that alone has made Graham Potter's teams one of the most fluid in recent years. Brighton under Graham Potter have typically been a possession based side attempting to control the game. However, as mentioned, Potter is incredibly fluid regarding his tactics. This season, Brighton have slightly seen less of the ball with a slightly more focus on hurting teams in transition. When building up, Brighton stretched their back five to create space to receive the ball. A wing back maintains a high position to allow himself to receive the ball with time and space. By stretching the pitch during the build-up, Potter's side can play around the opposition's press comfortably and efficiently as there are always multiple options to pass to. Doing this in the build-up allows Brighton's two midfielders to drop deeper to receive the ball and the central midfield pairing provides a base to build upon creating triangles with the defensive players. Potter encourages his wide centre-backs to step up into midfield and drive the ball forward. There is a big emphasis on the striker moving into space behind the opposition. The fast pace burst through the midfield allows Brighton to capitalise on space quickly. To do this, they must have willing runners who support the midfield. The wing backs of Brighton often find themselves in very advanced positions in the area where an out and out winger would occupy. Ultimately, this is a risk as a quick transition could lead to the opposition counter-attacking and capitalising on the space left behind Brighton's wing backs. However, Potter is willing to take the risk and nullifies it. Brighton's attacking transitions are fast and furious. They want to counter-attack quickly and exploit the opposition's unbalanced shape following a turnover in possession. The wingbacks very quickly break forward to support the attack. Also, the wide attacking players look to take up space centrally to link up with the striker and the wingbacks. The attacking transitions are essential as they want to progress to the final third. The attacking transitions consist of a long ball out into the wide space followed by a cross. Alternatively, Brighton and look to build up from their strikers feet. Danny Welbeck on average receives 13 passes per 90 minutes playing as a solo striker last season. He is vital during transitions and he is always the furthest forward and provides a solid target during the transition. Now that is how Brighton would typically set up in possession on the grand pass. So what we are going to do now is go into football manager, set that up in possession and then for out of possession we will come back to that when we are setting up the out of possession tactic in football manager. So so let's head over to Football Manager. Welcome back to the Football Manager tactic screen. Now, one of the most intriguing parts about doing this um, tactic in Football Manager is kind of deciding on the formation. As we know, Brighton were very, very fluid. They kind of changed their formation, chopped and changed on the match by match basis. So they did use a lot of different tactics. But what we can do at Chelsea is kind of work out the best formation or the best formations that could be used at Chelsea. For me, it was the 3 4 3, so three um, central defenders, a flat four or wing backs, and two central midfielders, then the two wide men who come inside, and that one striker up top. Or it could possibly be a 4 3 3. The new Chelsea owners, apparently or reportedly, really, really want to use a 4 3 3. So we're going to give them their wishes. We are going to create a 4 3 3, but we are also going to create a 3 4 3, try and be fluid as we can be in football 
Football Manager. So very quickly, I have built my 3-4-3 formation and we are going to start with the player roles. Now, our defensive line, I would say Brighton mainly operated in the mid block on the um, Graham Potter. But being at Chelsea, where we've got better quality of players, we can be a little bit more proactive. So we can kind of have a higher defensive line, meaning our super keeper or meaning we can be using a super keeper, either defense support on attack, whatever you prefer to use. In central defense, in the middle, we are going to be using a central defender just on defend and then the one or the defender on the right hand side we are going to be using a wide center back kind of stretching the play we want to stretch the play just like Brighton did on the grand potter but on the left hand side we are going to be using a ball playing defender now we've got a nice mixture of roles here a central defender kind of safe in possession a ball playing defender looking to progress with the ball at his feet by dribbling or by a pass attempting a more risky pass it could be a long ball again what Graham potter <laughs> likes in his Brighton side and we do have a wide center back here as well kind of helping with the underlapping overlapping on the right hand side but also again helping stretch that back line so that's our back line shape here and for the wing backs we are going to be using a wing back but on automatic so we're going to kind of go with the flow of the um the match mentality so if we are on control both of our wing backs are going to kind of be slightly more positive but they're kind of wary with their defensive positioning on the attack mentality they're going to be looking to get further forward put crosses into the box being cautious if we're playing cautious whenever we do use cautious then they are of course both of them going to be more cautious with their movement so the wing backs are going to be wing backs on attack in central midfield now we don't want a lot of movement in central midfield because we don't want to get hurt too much on the transition so for the right hand side we are going to be using a DLP now something else that I didn't touch on in the analysis is that Graham Potter this season has used a 3 plus 1 and um, build up shape a lot we've got three central defenders as kind of the base build up and then we have the one top of that diamond kind of like the shape here and we've got a 3 plus 1 always creating overloads when attempting to build up from the back so we are using a DLP for that reason also but also for the reason that he's going to hold his shape in midfield and then when we do lose the ball higher up in possession we should have a kind of decent rest defense our three central defenders our deep line playmaker and then our central midfielder on support just balancing out the risk again he can go forward but his main job or duty is to kind of hold his shape or hold his position in that central midfield area but now moving further forward into the attack line on the left hand side we are going to be using an inside forward on support we are going to be using the inside forward on support on the right hand side it will be that inverted winger on support as well so mainly what we're going to have is the wing backs both wing backs overlapping and then the two wide men coming inside they play narrowly or in central areas a lot on the grand par and that is what we want so on the grand par you could technically count these two players as two eights or two tens sorry not two eights two tens in football manager it kind of left us really really unbalanced and it was easy for the opposition to play out into the wider areas as well with a lot of our players just bunched in the central areas so it does suit Chelsea better this formation we are looking for a formation that also suits Chelsea and lastly up top we are going to be using a deep line forward on attack up top so that there are the player roles all sorted now for the in possession for the mentality we are going to be using attacking the main thought process behind using the attacking mentality was that it worked best in football manager it gave me the better results but also it does still work well in terms of trying to control the game we still control the game as you will see a little later with the average possession we're way over 50 percent some games was getting 60 percent 62 percent so it's still done very very well in holding possession now that might mean or that might be because of the formation that we're using rather than the mentality but attacking mentality for some odd reason works really really well we are going to be working the ball into the box and we are going to be more disciplined as well be more disciplined surprise surprise i do want our our players to stick with their jobs and duties rather than going outside of the tactical responsibility which is something that attacking mentality might actually do where our DLP matches run further forward our central midfielder matches run further forward or they might try a very very risky action because of the attacking mentality and because of the expression that they are allowed but we are going to be asking them to be more disciplined and work the ball into the box also with the attacking mentality
mentality as well. It allows us to be a little bit more direct, which we noticed under Graham Potter this season. Brighton were a little bit more direct rather than the heavy possession base or the possession base that some might put along with Brighton. Now, in transition, when the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press. Brighton do counter press, but it's not a relentless press. They will counter press six seconds after losing the ball, and then you will notice that press kind of drops off. When we have won the ball, then we are going to be making our counter movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession of the ball, he's just going to take short kicks and distribute the ball to the central defenders. Now, for out of possession, we are going to go back to the tactical analysis to, I mean, talk about how Brighton are set up out of possession. Brighton defensively set up very rigid and stuck to a 5-3-2 formation. This setup allows Seagulls to create three solid lines for the opposition to break down, leading to a frustrating and challenging task of playing through the lines. In a 5-3-2, Brighton's wingbacks drop deep to create a bank of five. The Seagulls often deploy their 5-3-2 as a mid-block. Doing this controls the opposition and keeps tight gaps between players. The manager instructs his team to capitalise on the momentum of a backward pass by pressing and pushing up as one unit however the press is usually light and not sustained for very long in terms of defensive transition Potter deploys a counter press the former Swansea boss wants his side to win the ball back as soon as possible Brighton's counter press is not as long lived compared to other teams and is only maintained for a few seconds So, going back to Football Manager, or back now on Football Manager, as we have mentioned already, Brighton will look, or Graham Potter will look to counter press, but that counter press or that pressing isn't sustained for very long. But at Chelsea, like we said, we want to be a little bit more proactive. So, defensively, we are going to be set up in a higher block. We are going to prevent that short goalkeeper distribution, and we are also going to force the opposition on the outside. And that there is how we have set up Chelsea under Graham Potter. Now, this is only one of the formations this is the 343 now we can also look at the 433 which is very very similar in terms of style of play but as you can see now we are using of course a back four we are using a full back on defend two central defenders and a wing back on attack now you will have noticed as well this one is a little bit more possession based than the previous one the previous tactic the 343 was a little bit more direct now you can see we are using a positive mentality and we are playing out from the back we are using two central defenders who are going to be looking to keep the ball be composed on the ball making sure they are playing safe passes and keeping possession of the ball and then we do have a register as well as our dm in central midfield we do have a central midfielder on support but we also have that mezala on support we do have an inside forward on support inverted winger on support and a dlf on attack just like the previous formation now some may ask about the player instructions we can look at the player instructions but there aren't many now the two wingers are going to be holding up the ball and sitting more narrow now this will allow some natural overlaps rather than using um the overlap instruction and forcing them whenever we are going to naturally allow them to happen by having the two wide wingers holding up the ball but then the two wingers or the two wing backs are going to be getting further forward anyway so if the wingers are holding up the ball and the wing backs get further forward we are naturally creating an overlap and they're also going to be sitting more narrowly as well in central midfield the central midfielder will be tackling hard and the central defenders the ball playing defender He's going to be dribbling more, staying wider whilst the wide centre back has take more risk. And that is it for the player instructions. And that is also it for the tactic we have wrapped up the tactic now there is one more tactic that i didn't show you so this these two are kind of more proactive you would use against teams you are expecting to win i did use the 433 more often so at home and the 343 away from home but that wasn't necessarily a strict rule i just used what i felt to at the time it also mattered about my central defenders as well if i had three defenders fit then i often went with the three defenders but if one wasn't fit, then I'll go for the 4 3 3. We also have a 3 4 3 that is actually focused a little bit more on the counter attack, and you will have noticed slight role changes. So, our DLP, he's now on defend the inside forward is on the attack and up front we do have a pressing forward rather than a deep line forward a pressing forward trying to kind of not allow teams to play out from the back now we are passing into the space we are operating with an extremely high tempo and in transition we are regrouping so we are kind of more counter attacking base kind of sitting back and then trying to hurt teams on the transition and yeah 
that is practically it. We've got three tactics. You would, of course, use this against the better teams. Manchester City away, Liverpool away, Man United away, Arsenal away, Tottenham away, possibly. And then you would use these tactics at home and against teams that you are expected to be away from home as well. Unfortunately, that wraps up the tactic. Now we can look at some of the results that we got at Chelsea. So in the English Premier League, we've done extremely well. We played 38 games, winning 34, drawing three, losing one. That one loss came annoyingly away to Tottenham. The three draws, I mean, we drew 1-1 one, one at Etihad. We drew 1-1 one, one at Anfield. And annoyingly, we drew 0-0 nil, nil to Fulham at home. But in the Champions League, we got knocked out in the semi-final against Real Madrid. In the FA Cup, we managed to win that, beating Manchester City 4-3 in the final. A final that they actually kind of dominated, especially statistically. But again, we are looking to hurt teams on the break. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Leeds. But in the Premier League, we did score the most goals with 97 goals for the possession. We come in fourth with 55% of the ball. So that, so like I said a little earlier, we still are seeing a lot of the ball. So we are using that attacking mentality, but we aren't losing the ball very often. Most tackles were not in the top eight. Most dribbles made not in the top eight, but we did have the most clean sheets and the fewest conceded. Looking at the player stats as well Mason Mount with 21 goals Kai Havertz with 16 for the most assists Mason Mount with 14 Reese James with 11 Reese James probably set pieces dribbles made the most tackles one we aren't expecting anybody in that list but for the most clean sheets and for the viewers conceded it is Edward Mendy now what we can do actually is have a look at some of the goals some of the style of play before we do close this video now let's look at this game where we beat Leicester 4-0 at home at the bridge they did have a man set off in the 61st minute but by then the game was already 4-0 and it was already wrapped up so this highlight starts with Vestergaard clearing the ball picked up by Fofana plays it to James Hez Kovacic now to Raheem Sterling plays it to James and here's a wing back whipping in the ball hard and low and Christian Pulisic puts the ball in the net 1-0 to Chelsea here is the second goal Barnes loses the ball to who is that that won the ball there Chaloba he plays it through to Kai Havertz the deep line forward breaks through and he nicely slots it in 2-0 to Chelsea and Kai Havertz first goal of the game Hez Kovacic now with the ball Christian Pulisic Plays it to Havertz. It's nice football here inside the box. It's comfortable play. And what a finish by Mateo Kovacic. That was a very, very good goal and comfortable play. And Kovacic's second goal is, of course, a penalty where Leicester got their player sent off. Now, we also have this game against Newcastle where we did win 3-0. And as you can see here at the bottom, we do have 60% of the ball completing 93% of our passes. So we are playing some good football and we are scoring some, well, we will see hopefully some lovely goals. But has as well, that's a bit fast. Here's Kante, Azpilicueta, Cucurella on the edge of the box, plays it to mount and a nice finish there from Mason Mount. Here's Christian Pull. We might as well drag this back because it's starting way deep in our attack so Fraser tries to break through but Zayak or Ziyech <laughs> intercepts Kante plays it to Kante Kovacic as Piliqueta here some nice link up in midfield between the two central midfielders Christian Pulisic breaks through plays it to Kai Havertz plays it back to Kovacic Mason Mount lovely football lovely lovely well worked goal there by Chelsea and Hakim Ziyech just buries the ball for Farner to Havertz Mount Amana Broha Cut. Oh, love! I thought he was going to cut back there, but he just smashes it into the near post. So you can see we are playing some nice football. Not a lot of goals here are coming from set pieces as well. A lot of open play goals, which is very, very pleasing to watch. And, well, we did lose 4-2 to uh, Real Madrid at home. Let's not talk about that because we did beat them. We did beat them. Who is that? Oh, nice. We did beat them at the Bernabeu using the uh, more direct formation. Yeah, didn't go very well. Real Madrid were very clinical in front of goal. Karim Benzema specifically scoring in the 90th minute. And that was the goal that knocked us out. But we can look at some of the goals scored against Manchester United. So this would be using the more direct formation. We do have a better XG. But then again, we did get a penalty and... Just in general, Manchester United didn't create much. You can see with the average rating as well, they didn't necessarily have a very, very good game. Not many chances were created, the lot and Ericsson creating their only two chances apparently for Manchester United, whereas we created about five scoring chances, but we can have a look at these goals. So for the Mason Mount goal, it was obviously a penalty. Mason Mount <laughs> shaping up to take the penalty and it is a nice finished penalty. And for this, oh, I think we've 
Mr. Goal. Christian Pulisic. She's not showing us Pulisic's goal. Oh, here we are. So this is Pulisic's goal. Fofana plays it to Mount Kovacic. Now on the ball plays it to Armando Broha, Kante. And lovely through ball to Pulisic. And there we are. Just a quick, quick transition from the free kick into the attacking area. And Pulisic just buries the ball. We can have a look at Jaden Sancho's goal if we would like to as well. Here's Diego Dalla on the ball. See if we can defend better here. I mean, this fell to Sancho nicely. He's buried it. Nice finish there. Not much we could have done about that goal. Now, just to look at some player stats throughout the whole of the season. Kai Havertz scoring 30 goals in 38 starts. Mason Mount with 27 goals in 43 starts. Raheem Sterling with 25 goals in 45 starts. And Wesley Fofana with 16 goals in 52 starts. Again, it must be a set piece thing. Now, looking at the assists, Mason Mount with 21. Reese James with 13. And Hakim Ziyech with 11 and those are the players with assist in double figures that has wrapped up this video if you do want to download this tactic don't forget you can click on the link down below also also the research was from total football analysis as well the links to the research will be in the description below thank you guys for watching thank you guys for staying in tune don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed like this video share it leave a comment all of that goodness i will see you guys soon shout out to my patreons stay safe god bless